Alrighty. Hello, Yay. Randy. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. How exciting. Hello, everybody. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, Randy, um, maybe I feel like your last name kind of needs no introduction. People hear <laughs> the word Zuckerberg and, and they think Facebook meta. Um, but Never heard of it. Unfortunately, we're not here to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I guess as we kind of dive into this topic, um, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about your own story about how you kind of came into the whole art world and then subsequently Web3 and NFTs? Sure. Well, uh, it's funny because my, my whole life I actually saw myself as an artist. I was a, a musician and an actress with dreams of singing on Broadway. And then uh, naturally, as one does when you have that interest, I found myself in Silicon Valley working in tech at the front lines of, of Web2 alongside my brother. And, uh, you know, web, it was interesting in those days in Web2 because the ethos of the industry um, people weren't talking that much about the content. They were just talking about, you know, let's build these platforms with billions of people and like we, we'll care later about the content. Um, whereas my whole life had been about being in shows and where the content was king. Uh, after a decade in Silicon Valley, I actually got the opportunity to star on Broadway after all. I was in an 80s rock musical called Rock of Ages. And uh, that kind of got me back uh, to my artist roots and my artist heart. And uh, I thought, gosh, there's, it's so crazy that on one side uh, of the world, you have people just building these platforms without thinking about the art. And then on the other side, you have people that are so precious about their art that they make people fly to New York City or to London to see a piece of art and they don't stream it and they don't think about using tech. Um, and that was, I think, my big aha moment of how do we bring these two worlds together? And Web3 was just such a huge personal unlock for me um, of, of this renaissance of how artists could participate in both of those worlds. What about you, Debbie? Yeah, I mean, I guess I I feel like I'm more of a hobbyist artist, definitely not quite as accomplished as you, uh, but I've always loved I've seen art. your photography, <laughs> top notch. Um, I've always loved art, but never really saw myself as an art collector just because I thought, well, first of all, I live in a 400 square foot apartment in Singapore. Like, I basically didn't even have a wall <laughs> in, um, you know, out, outside of the, what was on the outside. Um, and I think Web3 was the first time where I really felt like I could start collecting and building an art collection and really start building such incredible relationships with artists from all over the world. Um, and I guess that kind of brings us a little bit to how we started Hug yeah. and how, you know, I think at the heart of it, our mission is really to help artists become successful entrepreneurs. Yeah. Well, and gosh, it's so exciting. We've been on this journey together for about two years, a little over two years now. Um, Debbie and I met as like two randos in Discord and uh, with a shared passion of uh, creating a, an artist community and a really a positive feel-good space inside a crypto world that, that didn't always feel like a, a feel-good space. Uh, we started with about, you know, a hundred people in a Discord who shared a passion for one-of-one uh, one art and, uh, and really bridging these new worlds of tech and art. And now today we have 15,000 artists around the world. Um, I, I've met a, a lot of our, our artists are here at this event that I, it's like so fun to meet people in real life. And I think what's so exciting is that um, 10, 20 years ago, you really had to pick a lane as an artist and, and have a specialty. And, uh, and today with technology, the new artist is multimodal. Uh, it's almost, um, it, it, it's exciting. You're expected to pick multiple lanes as an artist now, and it's exciting that we get to learn alongside one another. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, for me personally, getting to wake up every single day and being able to work with, you know, incredible artists. We have a um, hundred artists to watch, which are on the back screen over there. Uh, you know, we had this was an open call, which is something that we've started getting known for a little bit, I guess, because uh, at the heart of what we do is really to give, um, you know, as many opportunities as possible to artists and democratize access to that. 
Yeah, so Debbie, why don't you tell a little bit about what we're building at HUG, and we can uh, then talk a little bit about kind of artists of the future. Yeah, so I always, every time I talk about HUG, I always say that in service of our mission to help artists become entrepreneurs, uh, we always look at it through, I guess, three different pillars. Um, the first being that of discovery, so how can we make it easier for artists to get discovered, to showcase their work, um, and to sell their work. Um, another is opportunity, which I've already mentioned. You know, we've actually placed over a thousand artists in events and exhibitions all over the world, um, from as far as Tokyo to um, Nigeria to um, to to right here in, in Lisbon and everywhere in between, and obviously many locations in the United States. I uh, have also given out two hundred thousand dollars of grants and scholarships, so that's been really exciting. Um, and then the last piece of it is really education, which is something that we feel is really critical to help artists navigate this kind of new world that we're living in. Yeah, and I think what's so exciting too is that, you know, in the old way of doing things, you'd have a couple of gatekeepers who picked, you know, artists or styles that they liked and, and curated. And now we get to do that alongside a community of thousands of people whose votes carry equal weight or, or more weight even than, than the two of us. Um, and that's been the most exciting way of doing it because it feels like uh, we're, we're really creating a process where people can have exposure and opportunity and sales and discovery without that gatekeeping. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess as we're kind of entering, you know, we've been working on this now for two years, kind of entering the third, the start of the third. Uh, and, you know, we've always described this vision of Hug almost like a Facebook meets Etsy, if you will, for the next generation creators. Uh, you know, it, in the beginning, it really did feel like, I guess I'm dating myself, but it really did feel like the early Facebook profile where you could write on somebody's wall. Uh, and that was essentially what we started off as. We had all of these artists with incredible profiles and you could leave them a review to let them know like how much you loved and enjoyed their work. Um, and now we're kind of moving into the next phase of what we've been building, which is really kind of that Etsy piece of it. And how do we really allow artists to turn their profiles into their very own shop or very own storefront? Um, and I'm really excited about how we have a differentiated kind of vision on what selling looks like for the next generation creator. Yeah, well, I think one thing we've always been passionate about is how do we help people make a living doing what they love? Um, it's something that uh, I remember working in the Broadway space right when the pandemic hit and watching all of these people about to make their Broadway debuts have their shows shut down indefinitely. And I think for me, that was really the, the spark when I saw the promise of Web3. I thought, okay, wow, now there's a way for, for artists to really make money doing what they love without the fear of physical locations and government shutdowns and all of these other external factors. I think quickly though, the first thing that we started to see though is that, um, Artists, uh, Web3, even though it was so exciting, was, was almost just causing a lot of extra work for artists that they didn't need because people didn't just wake up and become an artist just because Web3 happened. People were creating and so now people had their Etsy accounts and their Shopify and everything and then they had to go make four more profiles in Web3 and they had to speak to the, the audiences separately. They had to have a, a certain tone of voice and marketing on, on Twitter and they had to have a different tone of voice when they were talking about their physical goods. And uh, so many of us who are artists, like it's not a full-time job. If, you, if it is a full-time job for you, that's amazing and lucky. But for so many artists, it's not. And so to just add all of that extra work was really untenable. So we thought, you know, how could we really be a multimodal platform where consumers don't have to pick if they're buying a scarf or a print or an NFT? They're, it's just, it's a world where all of those things live side by side and you don't need this Web 2 audience and this Web 3 audience. So um, we are launching commerce and, and shopping on Hug. Uh, this is kind of the first time that we're talking about it. And uh, we, our dream is really to create an environment where um, consumers seamlessly buy all of those things side by side. And for artists, it's just, it's a seamless experience to be selling in both web two, web three, physical and digital side by side. So something we've been building for a long time and, and really excited about. 
Yeah, and, and you know, we both love, I mean, we met, um, like Randy said, as complete anons. I had a Crypto Coven PFP, that was my original PFP, and how Randy got to know me. So, you know, we wouldn't be here if not for Web3. Um, but I think we've also seen over the past couple of years, the, the ebbs and the flows are like the cycles of the market. And so for us, so, you know, we always said, we're not building necessarily like an NFT marketplace, but we're building an artist marketplace. And right. How can we give artists the opportunity to diversify um, with as many different revenue streams as possible, uh, whether that be on-chain, off-chain? Uh, and I think what's been really exciting too is that it's allowed us to introduce a lot of artists who are not in Web3 uh, into what we're doing. Uh, you know, we I guess just last month we were in New York City and we threw our very first Hug Fest, uh, and it was a great um, experience. We had. I think two dozen artists who were selling their physical goods in person, and half of the artists there probably had never even known what an NFT was, and then the other half were very, very crypto native, but they were also selling their own physical goods. And I think it was a great celebration of how, at the end of the day, everyone are just creatives, and you know they want to they want to make a living off their art, and they now found that there's more than one way that you can do it. Uh, and so we're really excited about how we can kind of make that reality for, uh, for as many people as possible. Totally. We've also been experimenting with a lot of language about how to uh, bring non-crypto native people into the fold. Like, how can we get my mom to buy an NFT without, you know, even without scaring her off? And uh, so, you know, if you are a crypto native artist, we make it very easy to plug in that way. If you're not, we, you know, we make suggestions like, do you want to have a digital add-on and position it almost like as a tip for an artist to get a digital add-on? And we've started to see uh, that we're getting a lot of artists to start dabbling in the space that way. And a lot of consumers are starting to kind of pick up uh, and, and start to see the value of, of owning digital art. So. It's been it's it's been exciting. I think you know there there is a need for kind of a, a translator still in between these two worlds, and hopefully we won't need that in a few years from now. But while we're in this messy middle period for artists, uh, our goal is just to make all of your lives as easy as possible. Yeah, and I think you know there is definitely so much more room for the technology to to improve or to grow. Uh, and I think we're also really um, continuing to be excited. Oh, I've got a fly <laughs> on my face. <laughs> uh, but I guess you know really excited about the intersection of on chain and off chain, uh, and you know even bringing certificate of authenticity on the blockchain for physical goods, which I know um, some people are here speaking about today. Yeah. Uh, but I guess what else? As I guess we start to wrap up. Um, maybe some words of encouragement or advice for creators who are kind of navigating this, you know, interesting time that we're in, yeah. um, especially what we've seen over the past few years. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, I know from experience from being on the front lines of Web2 that, um, you know, it can be chaotic when you're on the front lines of a renaissance the way we all are. But it's uh, an incredible opportunity to get to be, um, you know, to get to participate in the early days when everything is changing. And so for everyone in this room, uh, it's, I think it's just so exciting to be here at the beginning and the kind of things that we're going to be talking about 10, 20 years from now to be able to say that you were in the room and you were creating when all of this started. Uh, I think we're going to look back on this with a lot of fondness. Uh, well, I mean, I will suddenly remember this moment. This is just going to be one of many highlights on this journey, and we can't wait for as many of you to join us as possible. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.